might be a little tougher question. You know, mm -hmm. here at the museum, we do a lot of work with, with students uh, in the education division. We get a lot of inner city kids. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're also seeing, unfortunately, a bit of a lack of knowledge of nature mm -hmm. with uh, not just inner city, but maybe suburban kids, too. This does not surprise me in the and, least. And yeah. I, I, I don't know how to reverse that. I don't know how to get them interested. You know, take the electronic out of their hands. And, and it's not just the kids. Mm -hmm. um, getting the adults, the, the yeah. parents involved, too. There almost seems to me to be a couple of generations that nature skipped, or that skipped nature, I should say. You know, and, and I noticed it when I was in high school. I, I thought, you know, where am I going to find a teacher who even knows what a lady slipper is? You know what I mean? Yeah. And because my kindergarten teacher had taken us out on these little field trip okay. walks and taken us out and shown us this stuff, and it changed my life to have a teacher do that. Yeah. But now it seems that uh, there's a there's a you know worry about liability. Mm -hmm. What if you fall? What if you hurt yourself? Yeah. And there's this whole thing about nature being dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that a lot of the nature shows have to be about crocodiles and poisonous, you know, uh, fish and, and venomous snakes that will kill you. It's all about danger. Nature is, is something that yeah, will yeah. get you. And I hate that. Um, there used to be a show uh, by John Acorn called The Nature Nut, oh, which yeah, was yeah. my favorite, favorite, because he wrote these little songs about things like mm -hmm. um, uh, fathead chubs, mm -hmm. minnows, and Joe Snum the chump. Um, just wonderful stuff. And in fact, the first time I saw it, I was watching it with my little daughter, and I wrote him a two-page fan letter. Oh, wow. And I just said, thank you, thank you, thank you, because, you know, nature isn't dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Nature is so elemental. Right, right. And we became fast friends. You know, it was just one of those fan letters. <laughs> I yeah. suppose you get and you go, well, that was nice. Um, but we need, we need that so badly. Yeah. Um, what puzzles me is how kids will watch a video of a cute panda or a baby lion or something. But, but the connection, it's there in, on the screen. Mm -hmm. right. But making the leap to actually want to go find a fox den and watch it, nobody makes that leap anymore right. because it's all right there in this little electronic box. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not good. Right. <laughs> you know, we just had an experience the other day. Uh, we use live animals here mm -hmm. uh, at work, and we're showing how the opossum eats plant material and mm -hmm. meat. And mm -hmm. It was eating a fish, and the kids were like, totally. They were just like, ah, it's so gross. I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. How many of you watch shows on TV where a lion brings down a zebra mm -hmm. and you think that's pretty cool looking, you know? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. here, here's an opossum, and it's just chewing up this fish. It's eating the head and the eyes mm -hmm. and the bones and everything, mm -hmm. and they're just like rolling all, I don't know if they were just being a little bit too theatrical. Mm -hmm, <laughs> or It can or, be infectious. Because, yeah, yes. because one kid's is sure. going, uh, and everybody sure. else has to go, uh. Yeah. But, uh, so again, we try to say, this this is happening, you know, right in our own neighborhoods. Right. And these things are getting into the trash. They're getting in, they're eating the little mousies that might be around your neighborhood. They're mm -hmm. eating mm -hmm. the, the, the cockroaches. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Insects. Yeah. Right? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when, when my son was in uh, fourth grade, uh, his science teacher, or his, actually his teacher, who was, had a very strong interest in biology, reached out to me, and together we made a science club. And we would, I was basically the person who came up with the weird stuff. And so weird I would stuff, show up always, with a critter weird keeper. Weird stuff, always good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Always good. And some hapless creature, you know, that I would bring in. But the most important thing that we did was we went out in the field. Mm -hmm. And because it was a rural school uh, with dairy farms all around and goat farms and stuff, uh, we could find all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I would bring my Kaufman insect guide. And we would go out with jars and just catch a bunch of stuff nice. and then bring it back and examine it. Or like I'd, I'd lop off one of my pitcher plants from my bog at home. Oh, okay. And oh, we'd open it up and we, would, and we would see what the pitcher wow. plants had caught. Wow. We'd identify everything. And, and I'll never forget the afternoon that it was a high nighthawk migration. And they were streaming over. And these kids had no idea what they were. Wow. No idea. Wow. And even had, rural kids. Huh? Yeah, yeah, even yeah, rural kids. You know, they thought they were hawks. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So there was the whole explanation of that. Uh, giving out binoculars to all these kids who'd never held binoculars. Wow. It was wonderful. Wow. Well, in the end, we had 30 kids who were staying f after school for an hour or two 
to drink this stuff up, and they were thirsty for it. And to this day, these kids, hi, Mrs. Zikafoos, you know, it was like waving, and now they're all grown up. Yeah, right, know? exactly. But it was it was wonderful. But you gave them that spark. You right. You did and something. Well, the, you... the key is that I knew this stuff, mm -hmm. and I could come at it, and they can tell what's authentic, mm -hmm. right? If you get down and pick up a spider, mm -hmm. that impresses them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so... There are nature mentors out there, yeah. and we've got to figure out a way to get them to these kids so they can think, wow, that's kind of cool that that person knows all this mm -hmm. stuff about woodpeckers, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, and again, it's it's not always just the kids. It's, mm -hmm. it's getting the adults involved right. as well. Well, the moms are... Not being yeah. so afraid of yeah. a spider or, right. a, or a mouse or a... Right, right. Whatever. Yeah, that's it. And, um, and I, I found that a lot of the mothers were very trepidatious, mm -hmm. you know, about being out or having their kids out. And I was thinking, wow, what, what happened here? You know, when yeah. did this all become so dangerous? But I think it's a combination of popular media and culture. And hey, it's so easy to stay inside. Yeah, it is, right. But, you know, I'm wired so that I can't stay inside. <laughs> if I have a chance to be out, I'm going to be out, yeah. no matter the weather. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish more people would listen to that inner wiring that's there in everyone. But we, we block it out. We block it out with air conditioning and, you know, um, comforts and remote controls and yep. all those things that are so easy to reach for. Absolutely.